Put your hands together one time. I want you to get together. I want you to get together. Hello everyone, today we're going to continue with the Nephilim look like clowns theme, which I've been working on. Um, and we're going to dive a little bit deeper into DMT jesters today. Now, this person here on DMT Nexus who's made a post is called Sleepy E, that's the name he goes by. And he has a YouTube channel too, I recommend you look him up and listen to some of the things he's been saying. And this guy isn't a Christian, he's not um, any particular... Um, truther of any kind but he has been making a lot of videos pointing out the repeated theme with heavy psychedelic trips that people keep seeing jesters so I'll read some of his post here and then we'll have a look at some of the other experiences other people have said they've had and then I'm going to show you a video involving Joe Rogan discussing his experience too with the same jesters so here we go a while ago, I made a video on YouTube showcasing my DMT Jester digital painting to try to promote myself as a beginning artist. Almost immediately after I get a comment from a raver kid saying he was so shocked when he saw the Jester in his first DMT trip, and he posted the digital painting he made, and it was almost the exact same composition that I had made. The place of the Jester in its hands was the same and the background colour scheme. His background was a little bit more basic than mine, but more DMT-like in my opinion, because it was circus checkered patterned and a square room. Then I get a comment from a lady saying she just broke through one night ago and had a bad trip of four jesters that were being like sexually aggressive with her. She said the background was pink and red checkered and she posted a picture of a black and white checkered room, which is pretty much exactly the same the other commenter made with his digital painting. Literally all the things we made and posted had connecting archetypes and elements that are too visible to ignore. I had issues with psychedelics where they pretty much cause probabil probability to be thrown out of the window and synchronicity runs amok. But that could just be because psychedelics increase pattern recognition making you notice things you might not have so might you might not have so you might just be finding more meaning in things but some of the synchronicities are linked in chain reactions that are statistically highly improbable i've talked to a guy that claims it's an anti-entropy effect on reality and probability which happens when you dose could be so what he's saying here just taking a break from reading this is that um people are seeing the exact same things the same rooms the same shapes the same beings and the same entities and the same colors and are getting very similar experiences when encountering these entities one lady here says they were being sexually aggressive with her now let's link this back to the nephilim giants of the past um fallen angels mated with human women created giant offspring which were cannibals and monsters looked like clowns with wild red hair and pale white skin and inevitably because they were so evil and never should have existed to begin with and had no real soul that could go to heaven because it wasn't compatible and their soul remained on earth after the flood when they were wiped out their souls are these demons still pure evil and still want to mess with human beings so can we be surprised that these things are sexually aggressive towards women when women enter into this realm that's one example so let's continue here but i have noticed some strange stuff back to jesters for one it's one of carl jung's main archetypes jester trickster clown of the collective unconsciousness but Carl Jung's collective unconscious is considered pseudo-scientific with no evidence to back it up. Hopefully you see where I might be driving here. I've looked up at what other people on Nexus think about it, and some have oversimplified it as um, pareidolia, and brushed it aside as nonsense. But what happens in my video is probably the first step to actually testing the hypothesis, because the amount of similarities we displayed is common, completely unlikely in what we drew. I think art is the only way we really can get to the bottom of this phenomenon. 
We didn't synchronize this coincidence ourselves, it just happened. But I strongly think something more profound is taking place here besides pareidolia. So I believe Sleepy E is slowly getting onto the truth here. He's right. Something is going on here which is beyond coincidence. What these people are encountering, ignorantly, because they don't believe or know these things even exist historically, are the Nephilim spirits. Disembodied spirits of giants that once roamed the earth, which looked like jesters and clowns. You're not going to any form of collective unconscious because we are not all one consciously, as you have been predominantly brainwashed to believe through modern New Age society. These aren't archetypes. They are literally beings, conscious beings with an agenda. So Sleepy E, you're, you are correct. You are getting close to the truth here. Um, you did not synchronize this coincidence yourselves. It did just happen, but not in a very strange way as you'd like to imagine. It's quite normal and understandable and easily explainable with this biblical perspective added in. So we'll continue to read here. Ah, the jester. The first entity I ever met. In my first talk of DMT, I lacking a scale, used a corner of a playing card to put a spot of spice on some marijuana. When I smoked it, I saw a spinning mandala that would break apart and reform itself into a playful but somewhat condescending, mocking jester. I concluded that this must be because I used the joker from the pack of cards I used to pack the bowl. So it was lingering in my thoughts and came out again in the form of a hallucination. That's when I saw the DMT art of others, much like your own Sleepy E, depicting a very similar jester. I had heard of machine elves, but never of jesters. The fact that so many people perceive this archetype is quite fascinating. Perhaps the fact that I used a joker card as a spoon was merely a coincidence. Perhaps only half seriously I interpreted the jester as a kind of playful guardian of the first gate. If he frightens you, then DMT is not for you, and you should just stop. But if you want to play with the jester, smoke more, as they say, and he'll open the door to the next dimension. I remember once having broken through, flying through hyperspace at a million miles a minute, and out of the corner of my eye, the jester appeared and gave me a thumbs up symbol, as if to say, you made it. Okay, so let's review this here quickly. Um, he thought it was just a coincidence that he was seeing a jester because he used a jester playing card, which is understandable. That's the uh, pareidolia he was mentioning earlier. The act of seeing patterns in things with our mind, um, which may not necessarily be there, but it's just something our mind does naturally. And when on DMT, it gets um, put into hyperdrive. So he believed he was just seeing jesters because jesters were already seen by him before he went into the trip. He soon pretty quickly realised that uh, this jester of some kind, as he refers to it, is a playful guardian of the first gate. And if he frightens you, then DMT is not for you and you should just stop. I would say you probably need to stop anyway. And um, what's going on here is this is not a guardian of some kind who's looking out for your best interests. Um, and he's not a guardian at all. Um, he's just another demon. A disembodied Nephilim spirit. So you see here, he's flying through hyperspace and the um, Jessa says, You made it! Hyperspace, as people keep describing here, isn't better than this realm as much as you some, for some reason believe it is. You say it yourself, it's a place of geometric form and pattern. I've seen it. I've done DMT plenty of times. I've done so much, I've done so many psychedelics, it's unreal. I know what you're talking about. And I'm telling you now, that realm is not better than the one you're currently living in. The 3D world that God created for you far surpasses this hyperspace, as you call it. 
Hyperspace is made of 2D imagery, if you pay attention. It's not actually three-dimensional. It isn't physical, therefore lacking. The DMT jesters can't experience life as we experience it, and they are actually worse off because of it, not better off. When they say things like, you made it, they are lying to you. These things are demonic deceivers. They are jokers. They are there to condescend and mock you. They aren't your friends, as I repeated in the second video. They are there to trap you and keep you in this matrix and to make you reject God. Here's another experience. My first breakthrough brought me eye to eye with the jester. Some friends also saw the jester on first breakthroughs. One friend saw me on a breakthrough. Next one. Hyperspace is full of characters and jesters. At the crazy carnival, they are rather common. They aren't very malevolent, but definitely tricksters full of tomfoolery. I disagree. These things are malevolent, and they are tricking you and fooling you because they are bad things. They are not good entities. They want to trick you. Post number five. I've also encountered jesters. Twice, at least, as my memory serves. The first time was a trip I overshot and ended up being smashed by a jack-in-the-box sort of jester. Another I remember was a trip where I ended up in some sort of cavern place where they were moving extremely fast and hurting and prodding me. Another similar archetype mythological character met by people commonly is Ganesha. They were hurting and prodding this man. They were messing with him, spiritually speaking. Because that's all these things want to do to you. They lure you in with pretty colours and laughter and joking around. And then they start to really, really torture you. The longer you play around with these things. They know your ignorance of their true nature when you go there, saying gibberish like collective unconsciousness and hyperspace. They are laughing at you. Because they look at you and think, what a naive fool. I could do anything to this person who's now come to my realm, and he will think it's a good thing, because he's ignorance. He thinks it's all new and wonderful. This is not new. These beings which have been in contact with mankind for millennia, through mainly tribes, ritualistic sacrificial tribes, uh, these things require sacrifice. They have been worshipped before. And now we have a bunch of 21st century millennials smoking DMT, not knowing anything about history at all, meeting these jesters and thinking for some reason these beings must be good and fantastic and teach you something. They can't teach you anything. They can only destroy you. Just like they did when they were on the earth, funnily enough. Post number six. A big question for me has always been, why jesters at all when it could be anything? It's without a doubt a consistent thing within the DMT universe with so many people. What is the significance of this I've just explained? I hope uh, this person listens to this video. You're right, it could be anything if it was just a collective conscious mashup of imagery based off the pool of collective memory of mankind, but that isn't what's going on. These are literal beings which look like jesters because in their physical form when they once existed, they looked like clowns. So Sleepy E responds, interesting replies. I was wondering if the jester archetype shows up in a tribe which has no contact with any cultures which have clowns and sees them. Does that confirm Rupert Sheldrake's morphic fields? How special can, how species can send information through ineffable forces? You could have a demon working with you and that demon can transfer knowledge to you from another place quite quickly, but you had no placing it and it has nothing to do with morphic fields as you're quoting here. 
It's much more simple than that. I get it. You want to believe you have superpowers that you don't know about and can unlock through the potential of your mind. But that's gibberish. You need to realise what's going on here. Yes, there is a spiritual dimension all around us. And yes, we don't see it all the time. But the beings that are on the other side weren't always there. They used to be here with us on this side, the real side. The side where life can happen. They are now dead, bodiless, in spirit form. They can't go anywhere else because they are earthly beings. Their spirit, their nefesh, is not God-given from heaven outside of this world. So they are still here when they die. They have gone nowhere else. There's nothing else for them to do but remain on the other side, bodiless. These things want a body to possess. They want your body. Are you going to allow them to do this? Drugs like DMT open you up to this kind of thing. Inevitably. Just think about it. So he goes on here to explain about uh, pareidolia, how someone could look at this and then on DMT see this. Essentially connecting the dots and creating patterns erratically out of whatever is there. And yes, that does happen. But um, from what I can see is it's mainly, it, the pattern is there, you're just recognising it finally. Um, call that spiritual, call it physical, it's pretty much the same thing in this respect. Here's his drawing of seeing a jester himself in again this square room. Um, again, jesters with bizarre teeth here melding into the walls. Um, it didn't quite look like this to my knowledge, but it's next to impossible to recreate a DMT trip in 2D painting alone. Um, here's what the woman would have seen. Not an uncommon scene, a black checkered cube, black and white checkered cube. Um, this is where that woman claimed to have been sexually assaulted by a gang of these jester demons. So this person goes on to say, I'm not sure why they are so prominent in hyperspace, but the reoccurrences of symbols, characters and dark types is so intriguing. I prefer the concept of seeing jesters as a result of wanting entertainment, even if it's subconscious. The first one I saw, the first one I saw put on quite the show and was pleased to see how impressed I was. The jester really liked the attention. Yes, it does like the attention. Did you know these things when they were roaming the earth? About uh, 4,000 years ago now. Uh, they were worshipped as gods and adored by mankind. People sacrificed things to them. You know, people worshipped them. And here they are once again, gaining your attention. Being worshipped again, perhaps. It was pleased to see how impressed you were, because it was pleased to see how deceived you are. Understand that, please. Someone else says, When I take a massive dose of DMT, or a modest dose of farmer ayahuasca, which is ayahuasca, I often experience seeing an arm coming from under my bed from an entity that looks like this with my open eye. I get afraid that it's going to grab me and pull me under. A long limbed clown like beast. Like a giant, perhaps? With its large feet like giants would have and its huge hands like a giant would have and its long appendages like a giant would have and its white porcelain skin, blood around the nose and mouth because they are cannibals and their erratic wild red hair as described by all tribes who encountered these giants or at least the last of them. This is your answer people. People of DMT Nexus, I am giving you your solution to what you are experiencing. Stop using these wishy-washy new age terms like collective consciousness or hyperspace 
just because um, Terence McKenna used these strange words while performing for you on stage and entertaining you with his own stories. This is what is going on. This is what you're really de dealing with. These aren't archetypes. They are literally just looking like that. That is what they look like. They are real entities, not symbolic archetypes. You're deceiving yourself at this point and putting yourself in extreme danger. So here's another experience. I had a similar experience when I met a 9 foot tall praying mantis light beings when I sub broke through on DMT. Looked them up on the internet and there was all this information about star seeds, inclusive of praying mantis like entities of the 6th to 9th dimensional plane. It was interesting but I found my thought forms manifesting a reality based on this idea, which I found to not only be limiting, but somewhat elusive and even dangerous, with things such as reptilian beings becoming a part of my conscious focus. Again, the reptilian aspect is the chimeraid aspect of the Nephilim that once roamed the Earth. They were genetically engineering each other, they were splicing animal and human DNA together, as well as creating these giant monsters. It's where the dinosaurs come from, we, we're starting to think now in the conspiracy culture. Uh, so these reptilian beings are just Nephilim, chimeraid, genetically engineered humans. They aren't a part of any galactic federation of star seeders or the 6th and ninth dimensional plane. They're all in the exact same place and deceiving you once again. Here's another experience. I had one experience in which I felt like I was at the bottom of a deep well and I could see only a small circle of the sky then four clowns leaned over the edge and started laughing at me. Not sure what that was all about. I told you these things are laughing at you. Putting you deeper and deeper into a pit of darkness. Thought this seemed relevant to the discussion of the clown archetype. This first article speaks on the clown role archetype occurring across cultures. Not totally sure as to all the historical accuracy behind some of the claims because it's not really cited at all, but a cursory Google search revealed at least two Native American tribes, the Lakota and Pueblo, have uh, ritual clowns of their tribes. I already showed you the Hayoka tribe, and let's have a look at the Pueblo one here really quick. Yep, they look exactly the same as the Hayoka tribe's um, jester. The black and white jester, striped jester. Exactly the same as the drawing I had created when I experienced these things. Um, which I don't have to hand right now, I don't think. Let's have a quick have a look. Um, desktop. I do have. So here's the Hayoka tribe. And what their jesters would have looked like black and white striped, horned monsters, and the thing I saw, if I can find it quickly, is here. Sorry, I had to skip a bit there. Um, it took me ages to find this picture. But this is the same thing I saw, the same black and white line, striped, monster, jester, entity, thing, with a face like something from the Easter Island heads. It is the same as this Hayoka tribe, um, jester, everyone sees, and the same as the Pueblo clown in this tribe. It's not uncommon, this is what these things looked like, and still look like. So we can bear that in mind and we'll continue with this. So the Fool Jester archetype urges us to enjoy the process of our lives. Although the Fool Jester can be prone to laziness and dissipation, the positive Fool Jester invites us all out to play, showing us how to turn our work, our interactions with others and even the most mundane tasks into fun. The goal of the Fool Jester is perhaps the wisest goal of all which is just to enjoy life as it is, with all its paradoxes and, di and dilemmas. So basically accept life and all of its sin. Don't worry about what's bad, 
It's all good. The typical New Age spiel. Gibberish. Relativistic nonsense. Let's continue. What causes most dread in the fool, Jester, is a lack of stimulation and being not alive. They must seek to be, perhaps as the sage, but may not understand this. So yeah, this guy believes there are good things here to teach us great wisdom about taking it easy, man. Not taking life too seriously. They're having a joke at your expense because you're taking life too seriously, man. No, you need to take life seriously. We're in a spiritual war. These entities are not your friends. So he thinks it's a very human experience to seek out experiences. He doesn't think these entities are actually there. He thinks we create them again. Gibberish. Stop calling them archetypes. They're not an archetype. They actually look like that. They're not a symbol. They are real entities. With a history. A real biblical history. Read the book of Enoch. If you want to know where these things come from and how they ended up there. Your ignorance is not an excuse. You can't just make up your own stories about these things. Okay, so we're getting to the end of the thread here. And you're getting the gist of what most New Age DMT trippers feel about this type of imagery. They don't understand what they are dealing with. They're in a heinous state of ignorance. They need Jesus Christ. They need to get to know God quickly. Because the longer they carry on deceiving themselves like this, the more they'll deceive others. And the more we may give these beings access back into our realm. And God put them on the other side for a reason. And we were warned in the Bible that as it was in the days of Noah, when these things roamed the earth, so will it be in the end days and the coming of the Son of Man. When Jesus returns, these entities are probably going to be here again in some way, shape or form. Whether that's through the possession of robotic bodies we've created for them, or the possession of our very own flesh bodies we have given them access willingly to these things will return but it doesn't have to be that way we don't have to let it happen now we need to spread the truth quickly and if you are under attack by any of these or if you are doing dmt and you do see or meet any of these creatures rebuke them in the name of jesus christ and watch them flee watch them turn on you watch them shout at you scream at you attack you and run in agony and pain and hopefully then you'll understand just what you're really dealing with demons and in the name of jesus christ these things must flee you have authority over them they have no authority over you unless you let them So we'll leave this video here for now. I'll leave the links below so you can go to this forum and check out some other people's experiences yourself. And I'll be making another video very soon um, discussing Joe Rogan's experience uh, with DMC Jesters. Thank you. Please comment, like, um, rate and subscribe. And please share this with other people. Thank you very much. I want you to get together. I want you to get together.